Well, good morning. Thank you for being here. Welcome to Gentle Yoga. And I know the state of the world, very tenuous right now, and hearts might be tender, and um, we can get pulled outside of ourselves. Um, and for those of us who are empaths, you know, hearts can feel really, really just uh, torn apart when things in the world go crazy. And I just want to remind you that this time and space is kind of to put ourselves back together, to give ourselves a break from the outside world, to create some sacred space for us to um, literally kind of remember ourselves, you know, to put ourselves back together, and also to remember that we are divine, we are powerful, we have the ability to, uh, through our actions, through our prayers, to make a difference uh, in the world. And so um, with that in mind today, we're going to first start with a little attunement just to really drop in and check in with ourselves. Um, and we'll definitely get some juiciness going, some mobility going for uh, backs and shoulders, so shoveling shoulders. And um, we will eventually uh, slide off into a state of, of real peace and oneness, and I hope that that will be helpful for, for you today. So join me on the mat. And if you wanna sit on a cushion, I like sitting on my bolster, just makes it a little easier to sit. If you wanna use a blanket or a towel to roll on your ankles or to prop your, your knees with blocks, whatever helps you to sit comfortably. And remember, if cross-legged doesn't work for you, you can always choose another option or sit in the chair for this part. It's not so much about the sitting, it's about being able to have our spine in alignment so that we can start to uh, attune. So give those shoulders a roll, squeeze them up to the ears and roll them back and down. Good again, squeeze them up. Maybe scrunch up the nose, face, the eyes, little prune face. And then exhale them back and down. And one more time, inhaling up. Exhaling back and down. And let the hands find where they want to rest. Are they in the lap? Are they on the legs? Are they palms face up, palms face down? Just see what feels good for you today. No right or wrong. And close your eyes now. As you close the outer eyes, really opening up your inner vision, your inner detective to go in. If you had a flashlight inside your body to search for clues. Just to check in and see how's the body feeling today. And rather than shying away from the spots that are achy or painful or maybe just dull, I invite you to bring some awareness to those areas, maybe just one at a time. Maybe checking in with the first spot. Take in a big breath in through that area. Send in some love, send in some TLC, some appreciation. It might be just doing the best it can. And going in with your mind to maybe find another area of attention. And it doesn't necessarily need to be painful or Achy. It might also be an area that just has some sensation or some energy. Breathing into that spot. And sending appreciation. Gratitude. For 
even having the opportunity in a safe space to be able to practice together like this, cultivate peace inside and outside. And then bring in hands to prayer palms in front of your heart, dropping your chin towards your chest. Really noticing what's on your heart today. Again, not having to push anything away or change anything. Just allowing. There's such grace in allowing our feelings. Allowing them to move and shift as well. The fluttering the eyes open now. And let's inhale those palms right up. Maybe they're prayer palms. Maybe they're interlaced fingers. If your shoulders are tight, maybe it's more of a chalice cup. You know, arms just reaching up. So whatever your little flame here is today, pressing into the sits bones, up through the fingers, up through the crown of the head. And if you're wider with the arms, really feel the head just grow up into the space between your arms. And then let those arms float down. We're gonna bring them behind us. Might be on the floor, below the bolster, puff out the heart. Take a little imaginary sunbathe here. Oh. Good, bringing in some of the radiance, even if it doesn't look like that outside. Good, and then coming back to center. So we're gonna to start to do some warm ups now. If you wanna stay in the same position, you can. You might also like to cross your legs your non-habitual direction, just for fun and to, all of a sudden it feels awkward, but this is kind of the point to help us mix up our habitual ways of moving and being. So we're going to take some circles now. Circle around with the torso. Uh, could be little circles, could be big circles. Let the head come for the ride. And circle the other direction. Take it around. Starting to say hi to the hips, the back of the ribs, the shoulders. Good. And then coming to center, taking one arm up and we're gonna tip to the other side. And don't lean forward here. We're rolling ribs up to the sky. Take this top arm around now. Again, clearing some cobwebs, illusion, delusion, frustration whatever might be hanging around. Give it a wipe, give it a clear, give it a sweep. And then go the other direction. Notice what you'd like to pull in, and bring into your space, your understanding, passion, grace, peace. And then finally, leaving this top arm up, we're gonna put that hand on the back of our head. So now we've got the elbow up. And now purposely lean forward to look towards the floor with this elbow going with you. And then inhale, leaning open, supporting your head in this twist. Exhale, coming down. Inhale, winging open. It's really starting to expand the top lung. Go back and forth a few more times. In your pace. Ah, as we start to open chest, open heart. Good. And then reaching with that top arm, float it down and maybe experience the difference between left and right here. Just noticing. Mm. And then taking the other arm up and over. Lower hands just supportive. 
first just finding a little side bend here. And take arm back and around, sweeping, clearing. Maybe it's a blessing. Well, it needs to go. And then go the other direction now. Sweep it around. You bring it in. Yeah. Allow it to come to you. Nice and easy. And then the next time you're up, bringing the hand behind your head. This chicken wing elbow is up. Look down to the floor. Bring the elbow with you, pointing towards the earth. And then inhale, turn towards the sky and point the elbow up. We're gonna go back and forth here. So this gets kind of behind those shoulder blades, behind the top of the ribs. I'm starting to open shoulder girdle and chest. Mm -hmm. One more. And supporting the head here. And then taking the arm up and releasing. Ah. Oh. Keep those shoulders a roll. Nice job. So we're gonna get off these legs the way they've been. Come on over onto hands and knees. And if you need extra cushioning for your knees, maybe use a folded towel or blanket. If um, you can always double up your mat, triple up your mat if needed. And you also might like to have your blocks nearby. Good. In fact, let's put our blocks um, just a flat way, about shoulder distance apart. And do some cats and cows on a little platform here. So our cats and our cows are undulating the spine, letting the belly hang and the head come up and the tail up. On the inhale, and exhaling, rounding the other way on the cat back, pushing the back up and the belly button in. Nice, one more. And then come to a flat back table and move your blocks maybe a little further forward than where they were for your hands. And if you don't have blocks, you can just do this on the floor, but bring forearms down. And so no pressure on the hands and wrists here. You can uh, clasp your hands if that feels good, kind of a little tripod there, or just leave them hanging off the box. I'm gonna shift weight backward and forward a little bit here, just towards the front of the mat, little weight bearing on the arms, and towards the back, going towards puppy stretch. In fact, you might like to widen your knees here purposely so that there's a little more space to go backward. It's like you're going towards a child's pose. This is a moving meditation here, deepening into hips, low back, shoulders, chest, heart. Breathing your way back and forth. Nowhere to get to. Good, and then finally coming back up to all fours, walk those knees in if they've been wider, just so they're hip distance apart. Let's turn blocks the higher way, kind of the medium way, and bring right foot forward, low runner's lunge here. And remember, you can cushion this back knee more, you know, it could be doubling up your you're padding, lots of extra cushioning on that back knee. You can also come higher on blocks to come up a little more on this. But the key here is this 90 degree shin to keep both the Achilles tendon and the knee safe. If your knee's way out over your toe, you're gonna to wanna to back that up or walk this front foot forward. 
so that as you sink into it, you get both the hip stretch, the groin stretch, and 90 degree shin. Good, breathe in. Leave in left hand on your block, right hand on your thigh. Take a spin now to look over right shoulder. So we're adding a little twist and a deepening for that left thigh, in front of the left hip flexor. Good, coming back with that right hand. Let's take a hamstring stretch here. Lengthening right leg and diving head towards right knee. Doesn't have to get there, we're just going that direction. Right toes could peel off the floor. And for a few breaths, we're gonna move back and forth between this low lunge and the hamstring stretch. You can have your blocks wherever they need to be or TP fingers on the floor to just support this transition without moving anything else. Ideally, the hands stay in the same place. Mm -hmm. See if you can smooth out this trajectory. Maybe new sensations arise. Mm -hmm. Excellent. And the next time you're forward, pause. We're going to bring this back knee back. Move your blocks for a moment and dive into a puppy or child's pose. So puppies head towards the earth, tail in the air, fingers reaching towards the front of the mat. Child's pose is a little deeper, buttocks towards heels. Again, your choice, depending on how the legs feel, the shins, the ankles. And you may find that there's some pressure of the belly and the thigh close together here, belly and thighs. And it's a good opportunity to breathe out the side body or the back body. We're in this counter stretch. And then coming back up, we're going to do that whole lunge series on the other side. Again, you might want blocks for support. I like blocks on this one a lot because it just helps us have a little more space to not just collapse over our leg, but have the torso up a little more. So cushioning that back knee, or maybe it's doubling up, extra cushioning back there. Knee right over ankle. And as you sink into this, if the knee winds up too far forward, walk this forward foot forward just a few inches so you got that support. Good, coming up maybe on higher blocks. Nice big breath in, nice big breath out. Leaving right hand on your block, left hand on your thigh and taking a spin to look over left shoulder. Just adding a little twist here. Hello, right thigh, flexor. So we don't want tweakiness in the low back. We find length in the spine, more so than the twist. Good, coming down with that left hand and we're gonna shift to that hamstring stretch. So long left leg, dive, head towards knee. And go back and forth here, nice and slow, slow mo between runner's lunge and this hamstring stretch. Toes can peel off the floor on that front foot, the weights on the heel, and shifting weight forward, flat foot. See how you could smooth this out. Be cognizant of what moves, opens, lengthens, strengthens. One more. Nice. And now, drawing this knee back, taking another dive into a puppy or child. So hands reaching forward towards the front of the mat. Our head can come towards the mat. If it feels like 
your head is in the air and you prefer to have a low block for your forehead to land on, that's also a nice option as long as there's no crunch in the neck. We want the head to be an extension of the spine. So neither backward nor forward. And if you're deeper in child's pose, again, you might want to widen knees and just see how that feels. Deepen into low back. Mm -hmm. And then come and back to all fours. With a hood. So moving your blocks out of the way. Just table pose, hands and knees. We're gonna tuck those toes and get off these knees and press up into our first downward dog of the day. So send tail up, you can walk one heel and then the other, weight going backwards away from the hand. Yeah. Put right foot closer to center, send left leg in the air, a three-legged dog. Bending top knee, little hike for that top leg. Mm -hmm. Coming on down, breathe in, put big toes close together, left foot stays on the floor, right foot in the air, three-legged dog, bending top knee. Good. Coming on down, and now releasing to the knees. Let's get off these hands and just come up on the knees. Let me shake them out for a moment. Ah, good. We're going to shift our weight backwards now into a little squat. So if this feels okay for your knees or your ankles, that's fine. If your knees or ankles don't like that, you might just want to come up higher with elbows on thighs, feet flat on the earth. Either way, whether it's a modified version or a deeper squat, bring the elbows between the knees. This is Malasana garland pose. Might even like to bring hands to prayer palms. Comes a little bit of a balance. Good. Let's all send tail towards the sky, head towards the earth, or you could pause with elbows and thighs to stay a little higher or completely drape. Keep knees soft. See what your back wants to do today. Press into those feet. Uncurl, take your time. That is last. Exhale, shoulders back and down and pause. Oh, one hand to belly, one hand to the heart. Eyes halfway open or closed. Checking in with yourself. Notice what it's like to be standing on your own two feet now. And what has moved? Where's the heartbeat? And even as you close the outer eyes, open that inner eye again, go inside. And maybe with the inner eye, also look at the outside. Look at um, and what's around you, not with your eyes, but the feeling of what's around you, the energy around you. Maybe it's just your body heat. Maybe it's your aura or your energy field. Feel that around you, outside of the body. Beautiful. And releasing and opening the eyes. Awesome. So ready to percolate a little more here in our standing poses and get a little more juicy now. So put whatever you've had on your mat to the side. And I'm going to do a little movement with breath also now to continue to warm up the body and loosen things up. So feet hip distance apart, nice soft knees. I'm going to do a nice easy twist here. A little ha, ha, ha. Let those arms flap. Loose coat sleeves, soft knees. Uh, 
can look around behind you or you can just keep the head looking forward even as the rest of the body does the twist. See what feels good for you. Let out that ha breath. Don't be shy, especially in your own spaces here. Let's out stale air. We get to invite fresh oxygen in. Yes. And then let this helicopter start to come in for a landing. Send banyan tree hands down to the earth and stabilize all that. Maybe feeling the after effects of the motion. Good. Stepping in now with feet a little closer. Nice big inhale up. Interlace fingers and half moon. We're pressing hips to one side as you tip reach and stretch to the other. Inhaling up, exhaling other way. So we already did a lot of that opening, you know, with the, the elbow and the hand before. And you might also like to do this with hands clasped behind your head. This is another variation. Just check out what does that feel like to keep the elbows broad and the chest broad as you go side to side. So hello, abdominals, obliques. Yes, we're toning love handles. Mm -hmm. And then come back to center, releasing. Ah, oh, let all the tingling happen. Then rolling shoulders up and back and down. Take a nice big inhale. And a full exhale over these legs. And you can drape. You might like to have hands on blocks. It could be hands to mat. It could be hands to back of calves. And tuck the elbows in close to the back of the legs. So all of these are fine variations on a full forward fold. Keep knees soft and belly close to the thighs so that the upper body's really supported and can drape. Nice. Releasing those hands and uncurling. And exhaling shoulders back and down. Very nice. So I'm gonna invite you to turn sideways on your mat. Take a step out here. And I'm going to go this way just so you can see me better, but you'll be the sideways on your mat. So we're going to do a little warrior and triangle series. So standing series in yoga, you know, build strength, determination, focus, um, muscular energy as well. So turn your left foot out at 90 degrees. And if you want to switch around on your mat so you can see what Whatever that is. We're going to take arms out at shoulder height, bending front knee. Again, just to where knee is directly over the ankle. If you're way out here, back it up. Engage the back leg. So really pressing down to that back outside of foot. Rolling palms face up. I'm going to take a tip to peaceful warrior, back hand to back leg, top arm towards ceiling. You might even like to make it a windblown warrior, bending this top elbow or putting the back hand on your waist to have a little more of a back bend or side bend, only if that feels good for you. And wheel back to the horizon. And we're gonna straighten this front leg now and bump the hips to the right. So it's a little hip bump out to the right, slide out along the horizon to the left. Now put your left hand back the hand to your lower leg. Top hand maybe on your waist and we're doing that roll of the ribs to look over top shoulder. And now just extend the top arm up. So it's less about the top shoulder as it is about the ribs, supporting with abdominals and back muscles. Good, inhale up. Exhale, bent knee. So we've gone from triangle back to warrior. And now relaxing, turning the feet in, feet parallel. Let's take a swan dive forward now over wide open book legs. Maybe it's fingers to the mat, maybe it's hands to blocks, maybe it's hands to back of legs. See what would be both supportive and curious for you here. 
Legs could still be a little bit bent. How can you dive? Releasing low back, groin. Good, and then turning heels in and toes out just a little. Make it easier to come up, press into those feet. And then curl. Oh. Stepping it in for a moment. Just noticing. Again, checking in with yourself, maybe noticing difference between right and left sides, having only done that standing series on one side. Maybe imagining that you could look at yourself from above. Practicing presence. Practicing peace. Practicing compassion. Beautiful. And we're going to do that triangle and warrior series on the other side. So if you want to take a turn on your mat so that your right foot is going to be forward, you want to turn right foot at 90 degrees. And generally, a good alignment is the heel of that front foot in line with the instep of your back foot. You might want to kind of check that out. That's usually a good alignment for our feet in these poses. And what's great is both triangle pose and warrior pose have the same base of the feet. So it's easy to transition between these two poses, multiple variations of them. So we're going to take arms out, look over right hand, and bend the right knee just till knee is directly over ankle. If you're way forward, back it up. Back up your torso so your weight's evenly distributed. It's a little less pressure on that front leg. Gauge that back leg straight all the way down to the back heel. Once you got your stable base, we're rolling palms face up and tipping to peaceful warrior. Back hand to back leg, top arm towards sky. Maybe bending top elbow, maybe putting this back hand on your waist. Create more of a side bend or back bend. Again, your choice. You can stay more modest here if you want. Just reaching towards the sky. Inhale, pinwheel to the horizon. I'm going to straighten front leg. So now we've got that triangle base and bump the hips to the left. So that's important in this. As you bump the hips to the left, you'll also feel the right hip crease kind of tuck right under the pelvis there. You're going to slide out along the horizon. Rotate the bottom hand, back of hand to the inside of leg. Top hand first to waist. Start using core and abdominals equally to roll ribs towards the ceiling. Now just extend this top arm. Breathe and reaching from earth to sky. Good. Pinwheel back to warrior, bending right knee and arms come to the horizon. What will we take a stand for or not stand for? Beautiful. Coming back with feet parallel. Take your swan dive all the way down over these wide open book legs and again, Maybe find a different variation. Maybe it's hands to blocks, hands to toes, hands spidering behind your heels. All kinds of curiosity down here, looking at the world from a new perspective. Mm -hmm. And then slowly turning heels in, toes out, pressing into those feet to uncurl. And to roll it up. And exhale, shoulders back and down. Walking in again. Coming back. One hand on belly, one hand on heart. Mm -hmm. So the head get tall like you were on a puppet string. Above. Grounded at 
open, strong, yet graceful. Awesome. And releasing. A little ease and grace today. So take those hands and wrists. Let's just do little fists and right hands. Do some rolling through the wrists. There might be little snap, crackle, pops in there. Don't be surprised. Like, ooh, quick crack, especially if you work on the computer. This too. And then rub those hands together. We're going to do a little, little facial massage, a little facial yoga here. So make some hot hands. And then let your eye sockets rest right into your hot hands. Mm. Letting those hot hands make some little circles on the temples, on the sides of the head, perhaps, or maybe down towards the jaw or the cheeks. Again, no right or wrong. Loose jaw here, drooling's allowed. <laughs> yeah. Good, and then take your earlobes you're just thumbs and forefingers we're making little dr spock ears or fairy ears it's pulling pulling up on the cartilage there again relaxing the face and then pull down on the earlobes i'm not going to do this too much because i don't want to mess up your sound but just tug your earlobes do your ears hang low to the bubble to and fro <laughs> yeah give them a little tug ah oh, and then finally a shampoo Nice uh, scrunchy fingers. Give a shampoo on your scalp. Maybe all the way towards the back, behind the ears. Ah. Maybe even a little tap, tap, tap. Hello, anybody home? Mm -hmm. And then release. Ah. And just notice how your face and your head feels. Ah. So again, a little yoga facial. We can shift our energy and especially as you might be in cold and flu season or as we head into allergy season <laughs> more in the spring i'm just about to head into that down here you know if you start to feel the sinuses um, getting affected that's a wonderful thing to do and one other sinus trick that i want to show you actually two sinus pressure points so these are from chinese medicine First, take your thumbs. We're going to put them kind of right between, right near where the eyebrows start, right? Like right under the eyebrow bone, right? Kind of where the nose ends and the eyebrows start. Put your thumbs there and then let your head rest into your thumbs. And you may want to walk those thumbs around a little bit. You'll know when you hit those spots because <laughs> they tend to be a little tender. So they're sinus pressure points. They might be a little closer to the nose bridge right there so no need to press hard we're just giving a little bit of pressure acupressure there breathe in and then releasing ah, to see how it feels for the face and by the way there's a whole series of little sinus pressure points here so you can kind of like walk your way under your eyebrows and affect that whole area and the other wonderful chinese medicine um, pressure point is right under your cheekbones. So if you were to draw a line down from your eyeballs, about eyeball width, to right under your cheekbones, and then let your cheeks rest up into those spots. And again, you might want to get a little closer to the nose, a little farther away, you'll see where the tender spot is, and you'll know that's it. So breathing, a little self care here today. And releasing. Ah, hello, face. Cool. <laughs> How you guys doing? All right. So we're gonna do just a little more of a standing series to get ourselves down on the mat. So bring your blocks with you up towards the front of your mat. I'm just gonna do a little simple flow to bring us back down to the earth for the second half of our practice being a little more mellow so nice big inhale up gather 
Exhale over the high bar. Salute. Pose of gratitude. Inhale up, swan dive forward, soft knees. Maybe bring your hands to blocks or hands to earth. Let's take a big stride back with right foot. High runner's lunge. Looking forward. Pause for a moment here. Breath or two. Maybe feeling the scissors of the legs opening, but pulling in towards the center line of the scissors. And a spring off that back foot to bring it forward. Pull forward, fold. Inhale, left foot way back, high runner's lunge. And again, the blocks could be helpful here. Stay a little higher. You're up on the ball of that back foot. Imagine opening the scissors. So pressing right knee forward as left heel goes back, but pulling into the center line of the scissors. Yes. I'm gonna step forward. Left foot comes forward, hips high. And dive into a forward fold. This time move blocks if you've had them. We're gonna walk our way back into a downward dog. So hand shoulder distance apart, tail high, feet hip distance apart. Welcome back to wherever they need to go. Long back, so head is framed by your upper arms. And now come down to hands and knees. Now, all the way back down to puppy or child. See where you'd like to land today. And see if it feels a little different now than when we did it earlier in our practice. Pausing to notice. And slowly uncurling, getting those legs out from under to come and sit. So, if you like, you might still like to sit on something low, like not as high as a bolster, but maybe a little bit of blanket or pillow just to lift the hips up, maybe half an inch or an inch. So we're gonna bring feet way out now, wide. So we're gonna do a little isometric stretch that helps to get behind those shoulder blades, those shoveling shoulders. <laughs> so we're gonna bring hands to the inside of our legs and press the arms into the legs like it wanted to press the legs out, but then press the legs into the arms. So we're not actually really moving anywhere. We're just creating some resistance. See how that feels for the upper back. Yes, nice big inhale. Exhale, start to round the head forward now. Still give the press of the arms and the legs towards each other. Mm -hmm. Nice, inhaling up. And taking your left foot now, and just folding it under. And if, if this feels like it needs, you know, a block under the knee or extra support, it doesn't have to be, it's almost like you were gonna sit cross-legged. But we're going to use this leg for leverage. So bring your right arm to the inside of this right leg. And again, press the leg and the arm into each other. And you'll see how that initiates a twist. And by the way, if this left leg really doesn't like being that, it could just be straight out. It's less about that leg and more about the twist and using the arm and the leg for leverage here. So press the right arm into the inside of the right leg and turn left. Left hand can be behind you, spinning. Good, and then releasing, coming back around. Let's switch legs. So it could be this free leg is underneath, like you're about to sit or out. It doesn't matter too much. It's really more about the spin. So we're bringing left arm to the inside. And, this, and again, this foot could be out if it needs to be. Take right arm way up, way over and use the leverage of the arm against the leg to spin to the right. Spin through the belly, the chest, sitting up as tall as you can. 
breathe in, noticing. Mm -hmm. And then releasing back around, let's bring soles of the feet together this time. Could be blocks under knees, bound ankle pose, holding on to ankle. Nice big inhale up. Exhale, hinge forward, elbows towards knees, diving the head towards the feet. Doesn't have to get there. And pause wherever your resistance spot is. Not forcing. Nice big breath into lower back. Exhale, what could you melt in the belly? Oh. Nice big inhale in middle back. Exhale, what could you melt through the front half of the heart and chest? Inhale through upper back. And exhale, melting the head. And that's it. That's your bound angle pose today. Releasing deep into hips, groin, low back, the sciatic chain. And then slowly uncurling, taking your time. Ah. We're going to fold up these legs like a book. You can hold on behind your thighs. Maybe hug yourself in now. Head towards knees, rounding that back, pulling belly button in, breathing through the back body. And spreading more space in the back, between the ribs, between the shoulder blades. And then releasing. Oh. All right, we're getting lower. We're gonna come all the way down to our bellies. Have anything on your mat, go ahead and put it to the side. And we're gonna spin all the way around to bellies. Make a little stack with your hands for your forehead so your nose has space to breathe. Maybe wiggle the, the legs, the hips, the belly, the chest into the earth. Find just the right place to land here. And even though it may be winter and the ground may be frozen or icy, sensing the life underneath, the sap, the roots, the bulbs and the earth that will bloom later, all gaining their energy, germinating or resting for now. And then looking forward, rocking the elbows under your shoulders with parallel forearms. So really be sure they're under their shoulders. If they're too wide, you'll feel like you're going to collapse here. So really walk them in so they're nice L brackets supporting your upper body here. So this is Sphinx pose. It's a little like our Cobra pose, but we've got a little more support rather than strain. So pull elbows back, heart forward, head is aligned with the rest of your spine. So it doesn't have to crank backward or forward. It's just an extension of the arc of your back. Breathing. Maybe peeking over left shoulder. Can we have appreciation for the past? history, even with all its beauties and challenges. And coming back to center and exhaling, looking over right. Maybe sensing what's ahead. But letting go of any projection. It's kind of leaning into curiosity here. Uh, what's well, just a little further down the path. And then coming back to center, pausing here in the middle, maybe even closing your eyes, present right here, right now. 
now pressing into those hands wing out the elbows and come on down make a little stack with the hands to land oh. and bending the knees picking the feet up towards the ceiling windshield wiper the heels from side to side now just release low back hips oh, nice and easy of course, these are American windshield wipers going side to side together. If you want to do European windshield wipers, it's heels out and then crisscrossing ankles. Heels out and crisscrossing ankles. Mm-hmm. Good. And then releasing feet down to the earth. Um, I'm going to invite you to turn yourself around right where you are. It doesn't matter if you're facing your screen. You can just listen to me for your final relaxation. So roll over onto your back. Find your way over onto your back. Let's tuck in those knees one last time. Do a little rock side to side to massage the kidneys and the low back. Happy kidneys from that sphinx pose. And maybe these are little circles with the knees, or little figure eights with the knees. Rather than a rock, see what would be really nourishing for you today. Just a little gentle organic movement. Letting the weight of your own body create the massage for your back. Good. And then taking hands and feet into the air. One less twizzle for ankles, for wrists. Maybe a little shake out there. If there's anything else you want to flick off or shake off. Uh, twinkling fingers and toes. And relaxing wrists and knees and ankles, but leaving those limbs up towards the sky like you were just hanging from the ceiling like a puppet. Letting any remaining tension drain out the arms and legs down through the back into the earth. Could you sense the, the melting, the thawing, slow drip and then float your way down feel that melting float your way down with the arms and the legs all the way down to the earth hmm. landing with arms by your side or hands on the belly You feel like you want to put on an extra layer or get under your blankie. If you want support under your knees, bolster with blocks or a roll towel, feel free to do whatever will help you feel comfortable for our relaxation time. This is actually our most important pose in yoga. To integrate, and to rest, and to heal. So finding comfort for your relaxation now. Maybe there's an eye pillow. your rest. And I love your creativity. Yes, a little legs up the ottoman or legs up the couch. Can also be a wonderful way to relax here. So Nice big inhale, nice big exhale. 
letting the breath flow easily like a wave. Be getting curious about the subtlety of movement with breath, what rises and what falls. As you notice this rise and fall in this body lying on the earth, also allow your awareness to expand once again beyond your skin into the space around you. This is a space of unity, oneness. Less about me and more about we. The we that we're talking about, the us, is not just the other people in your life, family, friends, lovers, colleagues. Also about our relationship with the divine, the divine we, with the beloved, who we call the beloved. And call it God, don't get hung up on the name, whatever your sense of a grander force in the universe is. That we, that longing to be in union. Where we know anything is possible. Our magic is not limited by time and space. From this space, we can send a blanket of healing, radiant light to whoever needs it in this world, somewhere close or somewhere far. The power of our intention has the power to heal. You are a miracle worker. And I'm taking a deep breath in to start to regather your energy, your attention from wherever it's been, bringing you back to you, the divine back to you, oneness back to you. And granted, we function in the world in our own bodies, with our own personalities, our own stories. But remember that you are more than that. And 
our practice of yoga helps to cultivate our capacity to be larger, to be more expanded, to be more conscious. Beautiful. So take a big deep breath in now, full deep breath. And then exhale, big release. <sighs> Again, big inhale, filling up completely, re-engaging with the body. And exhale, big release. <sighs> Sighing out anything you don't need. And one more time. And wiggling those fingers and toes, starting to say hi to the extremities again. And bending your knees, rolling yourself to one side, make a little pillow with the lower arm. And just pause in a fetal position on your side for a couple of breaths. Mm -hmm. Once again, appreciating yourself, honoring yourself, showing up for this practice to show up and be the detective, the explorer, the warrior, the water, the breath, all of it. thousand joys and a thousand sorrows in life, but your presence is key. And so using those hands now to press your way up to sit. And take your time. And coming back to one hand to belly, one hand to heart. Closing your eyes and staying in your own personal space for a few more moments. Remembering, remembering. And remembering our capacity for love, for peace, for joy. And hands to prayer palms in front of the heart. Mm. Namaste. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Peace, peace, peace. Shalom. May there be peace in the world. <laughs>